All right, yeah, this is, I guess, just some of my thoughts about um, how it's going, I guess, with the uh, the Tannenberg game and uh, what I think about the rules so far and also the map because um, I think that's just immensely important. I kind of clued into it yesterday before um, heading off to sleep. I was like, oh my gosh, this... They've kind of, at least for me, um, I think Spence and Gable, um, Richard Spence and James Gable, I think they kind of popped in part of the constraints or forced um, what's going to uh, potentially happen to the Russian Second Army by, um, well, p partially due to the rules of, with the retreat rules and where the reinforcements appear, as well as how close the southern part of the border here, if you can see it, I hope, along here, um, it's very close to the edge of the, of, of the map. And this is wonderful for what I think they're trying to do without even banging banging it over your head kind of thing. Remember, historically the second army got annihilated by the Germans uh, because they were able the Germans were able to uh, to get around them and and surround them and so on and so forth. Well, with these with this, let's see, I'll show you the train effects or the combat results table. You can see this. So with the CRT um, you can see, well, first off, uh, as a, well, you can't get destroyed as an attacker straight up. Uh, you have to, it has to be due to a retreat, and um, you're not allowed to retreat into an enemy zone of control. Um, uh, reg hold on. No, I think it's regardless. Yep, and so you're, uh, that's it. Um, you can see, there's no way you can uh, die otherwise. Um, what the hell was I gonna? What was I talking about here? Um, oh yeah, it's the edge of the map. So, you, but you can see, with like, it's pretty significant. Dr. Three, Dr. Four, Dr. Five. So, if the Russians hang around, which I was doing, and I, and Rob was just able to nail me. Um, so I was trying to ha hang around near the border, and there's the other thing. For the first six turns, the Russians have are, are uh, their line of supply is within uh, six hexes of a of a, an active rail line. Well, a rail line that uh, goes to the uh, south or east edge of the map for them, and um, also it has to be in supply. In other words, uh, there's no enemy zone of control whatsoever. There's no uh, negation of enemy zones of control in this. I like that. Um, Oh, uh, there's a lot. Of, look, there's a ton. Of nothing, I'm going to talk about the things I don't like, but this is. I mean, this is just fantastic. Well done. Uh, just brilliant. Um, uh, the thirty turns. I'm liking it. Um, this, there's a lot going. As far as I'm concerned, this is one of these games. Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm going to be playing it, even though my mind wants to start tweaking the rules. I'm like, no, you're going to keep playing it for a while, uh, repeatedly, and then um, then you can see. Uh, okay, now we're going to talk about a couple of things I don't like uh, so far. Uh, I'm not a big fan of the um, line, uh, the supply rules here for, and that's why I said I'm going to have to play the. I'm going to have to keep playing it. It's because it's my thinking, and it mean it's just like, well, that's not your game, Chris, and you have to play it by the rules, and that this is their uh, their supply um, rules, and that's just the way it goes. I don't like it. And it's uh, this, it's they defend normally. Um, so what I was trying constantly to do, and I was able to do it, um, is um, get around, Rob, like cut off Rob's lines of supply. But all a line of supply does is, and I'm gonna show you, this is the problem with Rob's stuff. I don't know if I put the counters around. Okay, um, well, I'm, I'll just tell you. Rob's, uh, robbed. Uh, the German counters uh, are most li like infantry divisions are 20 strength points. Uh, most of the Russian ones are 12. It's going to take, and you saw the CRT, here I'll show it to you again. It's not to start getting a lot of, to start doing some uh, like the real big pushbacks, it's going to require an awful lot of. Um, Russian strength points around them, which means a lot of counters. The problem is, is there's no stacking essentially in this game. So I have to start figuring out a way of getting around um, uh, the German players, which is not easy with that, like I said, with uh, the way it works here. Um, 
So I would like a little bit, uh, like I said, but I'm just going to keep playing it. So uh, the line of supply, uh, lack of supply, just all it does is um, it hurts you for attacking and reduces your movement uh, ability, but it has no effect whatsoever in defense. So you can be out of supply and just sit there and you're okay, uh, which I find that I find irritating. Um, the other one I'm fine. We haven't done ring. Uh, we haven't done ring forts yet, but we certainly have done detached forts, uh, and uh, th that's um, not. I'm not enjoying it. Um, and Rob's not. In, uh, Rob's kind of like, yeah, this doesn't seem make much sense. And trust me, it's in his advantage that, and he's going, that doesn't make much sense. So what it is, as far as I know, if I'm reading the rules correctly, which is detached forts are those located singly. So you can see here, there was one here. I know, I understand it was because of the way, yet again, and I think I was trying to get this guy, uh, yet again, yeah, I had to, um, whatever, and I still needed more, but no, I only was attacking from here with a two to one. Um, but you can see with the results here, that you're gonna find out in a minute. But look at the two to one, okay? There's this, I need to get to a four to one to create um, a DE. And for any form of fort, they're only affected, uh, at least for the detached forts, uh, the detached forts are only uh, affected by a DE result, okay? And you can see there's six strength points, and it says here, um, units may never enter a hex containing an enemy detached fort until the fort has been destroyed. Forts are only destroyed by DE results. And like I said, the first time you ever see one is at a four to one. Well, how in the world am I supposed, okay, like I said, that was probably not a great spot for me to do it due to the fact of the lack of stacking issues and I can't get enough uh, counters around to like you know get into that four to one issue okay that's I understand that but you're gonna see in another weird wrinkle about this bit uh, forts are only destroyed like I said uh, destroyed by DE results all other combat results are NE against forts Units defending in the same hex as a detached fort, uh, however, are affected normally by all results. So what in the world was happening was I had a two to one uh, combat going on here and Rob had um, some guys in here and I was attacked, unless I'm uh, not reading this correctly. So, um, so he had a, a six strength points uh, sitting here. Um, no, it was one to one or two to one. I can't, it does regard trust me I never got to the four to one is what I'm trying to say but I was able to uh, get his um, uh, infantry to retreat repeatedly and um, but the fort would just remain there forever and ever and ever it just seemed odd that uh, I was able uh, so it's what is the rationale there's probably just some kind of like oh Chris you just have to look at it this way this is what um, you know they were trying to model as in it um, maybe the troops thought the I don't know but it we just thought that was a bit odd that the fort is going to sit there forever and ever and ever uh, you know unless I get a four to one kind of thing and yet the people in here are forced to they could be destroyed and the fort could still be sitting there kind of things so it was like well not actually it couldn't be destroyed because it would be a four to one unless I had some people around to um, cause them that they would not be able um, to retreat. What else? I think that's about it. Like I said, I'm not uh, not the greatest at doing this ty type of stuff, but at least I'd like to get uh, share my thoughts. Um, is there anything else to talk about? I don't think so. It's a darn, f um, I'm enjoying it. Uh, I, like I said, I'll, I'm gonna stick to the rules completely as they are. Uh, Rob and I will keep continue playing. Oh, I will uh, stop here on a quick note. I do want to read this out because it does kind of make, uh, it does, um, gets in, incorporates into this. So I was reading um, uh, the War to End All Wars um, classroom thing there by Bruce McFarlane in the, um, uh, the Canadian War Gamers Journal. And uh, he writes here, and I thought, wow, this is really, really nice. To uh, he was talking about um, um, what you should be looking for uh, uh, when you're going to run a game for a classroom or, or for um, you know certain age levels or whatever, and he said at the very end in the final paragraph or final yeah it's the final paragraph for this uh, bit he goes finally, the game must work the first time. Most war gamers tolerate a poor first game. They intend to learn from their mistakes, refine their understanding of the rules, and evaluate their performance. If a game shows potential, the game will, the gamer will expect to have an entertaining game two or three sessions down the road. You do not have this luxury in the classroom. The students are going to play the game once, and it has to be playable and historic the first time out. Yes, it must be historical. 
Remember, the students will remember the game far better than they remember their textbook. Unless you want them describing how Germany invaded Vancouver to win World War II on their final exam, you had better make sure the game pretty much follows history. Um, yeah, um, this has been a wonderful time, and it's just going to continue on. Like I said, I'll just, uh, yeah. And now I'm going to try to do a, a post can games thingamajig, but then I've got some other stuff like, a, you know, normal everyday, whatever. Okay. See you later. Yep. Um, well, I'm thumbs up or whatever for this game so far anyways. Okay. See ya.